You know, Popeye used to say, I am what I am, and it's all that I am. You know, I think old Popeye might have been a pretty good car flipper. But as important as it is to know what you are, it may be even more important to know what you are not. If you buy and sell cars for a profit, or you want to, you're in the right place. This is the Flipping Genius Podcast. I am your host, Randy Lee. I've been flipping cars most of my life, despite having almost zero mechanical skill. For the past dozen years or so, I've been a licensed used car dealer in the great state of Alabama. No matter what the topic, the number one goal of this podcast is to help our listeners make more money. Let's get to it, flippers. A couple of weeks ago in episode 65 of Flipping Genius, uh, we talked about the three principles that I believe are are the keys to success in car flipping. And I really think they're pretty much uh, applicable to everything in life. And then in 66, which we recorded last week, um, I talked about the number one principle, um, and that's that you make your money when you spend it. So if you haven't listened to that one, definitely go back and listen to that one. Not right now. We can we can progress with this one, but that's that's such a key uh, that you you understand that. Um, and today, I think it's important that we talk about knowing who we are and what we do. Right? You know, not as a group, but we as in you, uh, who you are and what you are good at. Um, it's vital that no matter who you are or, or what you are good at, what you do, it's vital that you know your limitations. And, and don't think that you're limited forever, though. Um, I, I like to think of, of, of this personally. Uh, <laughs> I love football. If you ever listen to the podcast, you'll hear me talk about uh, Wisconsin Badger football and and uh, I, I, uh, I, I've coached ball and, and really enjoyed playing and coaching. And I, I go harken back. <laughs> I think a few weeks ago, I remember talking about uh, uh, Coach Vince DeMarco, my, my offensive line coach, when I first started playing football in fourth grade or fifth grade. And I remember, I remember this. Uh, you came out, you're a little kid, you know, and you got your first uh, – football uniform and I I remember I had uh, I wore high co- high uh, high top off brand converse uh, off off brand canvas uh, tennis shoes I didn't even have cleats and they give you this plastic helmet with a plastic face mask on it back then because I'm pretty old and uh, but before all that before you get your your uniform uh, officially they weigh you and and it was a big deal you had to go downtown in Toledo Ohio where I grew up and you went down to get weighed in. And the deal was if you weighed over, I think it was 105 pounds for that age group. If you weighed over 105 pounds, you weren't allowed to carry the ball. And and so <laughs> what happened though? And so, uh, and, and I, I tried, cause we'd get down there and we'd run around the block trying to lose weight right before the, before the weigh in. And I, I stepped on the scale I think I weighed 106, 107 pounds, but I was over 105. And they took my helmet and they took a piece of black duct tape and they put it right on my head. And <laughs> and that told everybody if I ever got my hands on the ball, the ball was dead. And uh, and I did. I, I recovered a couple of fumbles that year. Funny the stuff you remember. <laughs> but but instantly I had a limitation that said I was not allowed to you know run for touchdowns. I could intercept a pass. I could not run. I, would, I had to stop right there. And, and, and you know, it really did kind of set a limitation in my mind. And, and frankly, I wound up becoming an offensive lineman. Uh, and the only time I ever touched the ball was when I knocked it loose uh, on defense or recovered it on offense, um, which I was kind of good at. Um, but... Uh, it's an interesting thought, you know, that, that you, you have this limitation. And what I want to say is don't make yourself feel that you have to be limited 
by where you're at right now, but it's vital that you know who you are and, and, and it's, it's, it's vital for our survival. Um, and, and the way that this relates, that I, another way, is the team concept, which is another thing I love about football. I mean, football is a, is a, a team where you've got the guys who block, the guys who run. you got the guys who get glory and the guys who get uh, the hell beat out of them all day long. But we all work for one thing, you know, for that, that goal of victory, the goal of, of scoring. And that, I believe, is really how we've built our team at Middleman Enterprises, which is my company, um, built around my weaknesses and my strengths and others' weaknesses and their strengths. Um, and I think that that's exactly how I, I would advise anybody to build the, their program. Um, I mean, you take a, a, a situation where you've got, let's say, a mechanic who's not good at, at selling or maybe doesn't want to have a, a public persona. Uh, uh, he doesn't want to have a, a, a face-to-face interaction. He loves being under the hood. He loves being under the car. Um, he knows how things work, and that is his his thing. Um, well, that guy's probably not going to be great at doing the other thing, at, at talking, because he doesn't want to do that. Um, so the perfect teammate would be to get somebody like me who that is what I want to do. I want to be, you know, the face of an organization. I want to be uh, face-to-face with with the buyer um, and face-to-face with the seller to find the, the, the vehicles in our case. Um, so that makes a good a good team. And, and a person like me who, uh, I mean, frankly, if uh, I grab a tool, I'm more likely to break something than I am to fix it. Uh, and, and it just makes a, a ton of sense for me to get a, a, a team of specialists that can help me. And I, I mean, for instance, a specialist that I have on my team are the guys at Dennis Johnson Auto Repair that you've heard me talk about so much. Uh, if you've listened to other podcasts, Dennis Johnson does not sponsor our show. He's just a great guy and a good mechanic, and he helps me out. And uh, Gary down there uh, saves my my tail all the time by by saying no, you don't want to not want to keep this one, or yes, we got to fix this before you you sell it. Um, and those guys do all the basic repairs for things. They they inspect all my vehicles and make sure that they're they're legal legally and and safely ready to hit the road. Um, but if I get into something like a major engine repair or a major a trans, transmission uh, replacement or engine replacement, I've got a, a different set of teammates there that uh, I don't do that very often because it, it's expensive and it's got to be one that I make money on. We'll talk about financial uh, limitations later, but but I've got I've got those guys in place too. Um, body repairs, Dennis and the guys, they don't do body repairs uh they may they may stick a, a soccer ball in a fender or something and pop it out just to do me a favor uh but they don't they don't do body repair so i've got a, a guys guys that do that as well um i do a little bit of that that's that's something i i know how to do a little bit of but if we get anything major i'm going to bring other specialists in and another another area um our uh, title and legal issues with vehicles and i've got somebody along those lines that knows the, the laws of our state and the rules for titling. And that person is immensely important to me. So those are my teammates that make up for my shortcomings. And, and the key is that, you know, you are using the knowledge and ability that you have to succeed and you're, you're, you're gaining the knowledge and ability from your teammates to, uh, to overcome the shortcomings that you have. Um, and the thing is that it doesn't really matter where you're at right now, you can still uh, grow your skills and evolve your skills and and more likely, I think, evolve your team's skills because we all have certain limitations. I mean, I, I at my age, I guess maybe I'm the old dog who doesn't want to learn the new tricks, so I'd rather just bring in other dogs. <laughs> And it, and it does seem to work for me. But if you're, uh, I know so many of you guys are out there listening to me, you're a lot younger than me, you're just getting started at this. And, you know, don't let it 
don't let the fact that you don't know how to do something stop you. You can learn it, but don't let it slow you down to the point where you're not able to, to, to uh, flip your vehicles in a timely fashion because that is also very important. We've got to get good turnaround. Um, otherwise, you're sitting on stuff and, and, and uh, vehicles don't do well when they just sit around for months and months. I just talked to somebody uh, yesterday about a vehicle. Uh, actually, it was Dennis and he was talking to me about a vehicle that, uh, that he says every time we repair it, something else breaks because it keeps sitting here. Uh, I was act, uh, asking about a vehicle that I saw on his place that I thought maybe I might be able to buy. But, but anyway, that's that's a, a, an example of a real life problem. <laughs> um, it, knowing your limitations right now it could be vital to your survival. And that's that's what we're we're trying to talk about. And uh, because you don't want to get in over your head. Uh, you know, that the case where that mechanic's trying to do sales and he's not, he doesn't want to do sales, chances are he's not going to, he's not going to get in front of the customers and he's going to sell the thing for less than it's worth. Um, or, you know, trying to repair things that you don't know how to do. Um, that's not going to work out for you. So um, build your team. And along those lines, I, I want to, I want to encourage you to use one of the one of the uh, resources that that we've worked hard and are working hard to set up uh, with flipping genius we've got the car flipping forum if you haven't already joined I encourage, I encourage you to join go to to uh, Facebook and just search flipping genius under Facebook groups and you'll find our car flipping forum it's free to join and the whole idea there is is for us to build a kind of a cyber team where we can work together and answer each other's questions, uh, possibly help each other, direct each other to resources. Um, brag a little bit, that'd be fun. Uh, tell us your success stories. Tell us your problems, if we can help. Um, you might have somebody right in your backyard that you can team up with. You don't know, as we grow this thing, it, it'll grow big and it's it's very uh, very strict on, on who joins. So when you do join, you're gonna be asked a couple questions. Please answer the questions so I know that you're legit. Um, we, we've already had, we've already begun to get some spammers trying to join, uh, our, our, uh, car groups, when you go there, when you go do that search, you'll see, uh, car, uh, sales groups with the flipping genius logo on them. And those are all over the United States now. And some of those have, are, we're getting over well over a hundred spammers trying to join our groups every single day. We block those people out so that you do not get. A bunch of junk so when you join our group you will see uh, as it grows you're going to see more and more just pure information uh, beneficial information uh, that, that will help you and help other flippers out so uh, go to the car flipping forum on, on Facebook and join that I also want to encourage you to become a flipping team member and when you do you not only help support the flipping genius program uh everything that we do here at flipping genius the podcast the videos the youtube channel the website the resources page and everything else that we put together to help you the listener make more money but you also benefit from our flipping team member benefits program which includes over 250 dollars right away in value that you you'll get uh through email and through mail uh, to help you with your flipping business. Um, you can go to flippinggenius.com and just click on become a team member and you'll find out more about it. Go Or go to uh, Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com uh, backslash flipping genius with one G and learn more. Really appreciate it if you'll consider doing that. Uh, now, what about other limitations? <laughs> I've been having a lot of internet limitations today, so whew, it's driving me crazy. So if you saw a little hiccup there, that's that's in between us, but still got the same shirt on, still got the vehicles back here. <laughs> um, other limitations, you got to know your abilities and your skills, but but there's other limitations that you need to know, and I I. I I think this is really important that you address this and that you think about this. 
Um, if you're brand new, you know, you want to know this up front. If you're not brand new, you're, I'm going to probably say some things that you're going to say, oh, yeah, that's me or that's my partner or, you know, um, because all of us have personality limitations. I I think some of us less than others. Um, I think of, of, of uh, people who, who are very capable in a lot of different areas. Um, my son is one of those guys and, uh, you know, I'm so proud of him, but he can handle a lot of different things, but, but probably even him, he probably has some weaknesses. Um, and I'm just going to throw out some, some personality types that come to mind right away that I, and, and some ideas on how they can help. The first one that thinks of, that I think of is I call him the perfectionist. And uh, the guy that comes to mind for me is my dad. Uh, and I, I think I, my first thought is my dad could have never made it flipping cars. Um, but at least he couldn't do what I do, flipping, you know, low budget cars. Uh, because he could never get them perfectly right. You just can't do that in the price range that I work in. Um, and and that, But I don't want to just beat up dad. Um, and 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 people who are along those lines the guys that just want everything to be perfect uh because there's a place for them and and that's the, the one thing you could do is target a market where near perfection is the goal and I, I guess a market like that might be higher end vehicles uh you know they just have higher expectations um like this stuff um or, or classic you know, restoring classic vehicles, 57 Chevys and and uh, 59 Cadillacs, boy, I love those things. Um, and, and specialty vehicles, specialty vehicles like that, that, that where that level of perfection is the expectation. But the key there is you've got to still get that turnaround that I, I mentioned earlier. So you've got to know, you got to recognize your limitations on that. And, and another way to to help safeguard against that personality limitation that you might have is to partner with somebody who can ground you, but also that you can respect. Um, I think of my dad's not with us anymore, but I, I think of if my dad and I worked together, it would be very difficult because we're so far apart in, in our expectations. So you'd have to, to recognize that too. But but certainly, you know, you bring different uh, elements to the to the table. Speaking of that, I'm going to call my my uh, personality uh, limitation the hype man. Um, I don't know what you you may uh, have different names for it, but uh, I think some people would call it the bullshitter. Uh, <laughs> but but yeah, let's call him the hype man. That's a little bit better. Uh, you know, I I've built businesses personally in numerous industries um real estate tobacco <laughs> fashion publishing uh and, and now car flipping and a few others in between with very little knowledge of the products or the industry i've just jumped in and and got it going and i'm not scared to jump in and just make things happen because i'm the hype man i guess uh I've told you before, I make decisions quick and I get moving on them. Um, this is not always good. I recognize this. I mean, I'm real proud of <laughs> what we've we've accomplished, but the fact is there's there's a weakness and a shortcoming here. You've got to recognize that. That is a that is a key. Um, so if you're like me, and uh, then you can get yourself in trouble. Um, and the key is to partner up with with coaches. Uh, one of my coaches is is uh, uh, Melody Tholstrup. You could hear her back, I think, in episode 31, talking about a little bit about what we do and some other friends uh, that I, I get together with uh, in a um, uh, mastermind group, in, including uh, um, uh, Rachel Eubanks that you heard back in episode 62 and 63. Just a great resource for me. Um, my son, frankly, is another one of my uh, my my uh kind of roadblocks or guardrails my wife also um but uh um to get get people who have more of a perfectionist mindset uh to you know kind of keep me in in bounds you know to keep me on on target 
and make sure that I'm doing the things I need to do because I'm 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 like kind of the opposite of that perfectionist. I'm likely to just put it out there. So along those lines, also, I've got to I've got to have uh, a team that helps me. And I've talked about my mechanic team and and those guys that know that other stuff. Um, but not only do they know this stuff, but they also need to have those those other benefits. So um, in my case, you know, you, you, you team up with people that fill in those holes that we've already talked about. But now I'm, I'm just talking about from the personality standpoint. Um, and, and another thing is, is for me to target a market that is more forgiving as far as car flipping. Uh, you know, I've talked about it before, but but I target I, I sell vehicles that are usually less than four thousand dollars. So I try to buy them for less than two thousand um, dollars and, you know, do the fix on them, sell them and make I'd like to make a thousand dollars per vehicle. I probably usually hit around eight, nine hundred dollars per vehicle. Um, and in that market, nobody expects it to be perfect. That's just the that's just reality. Tell the truth. Tell what you know. That's the market a place I work in, so that's a good target place, target market for me to work in, um, and continue to learn and keep building your team, especially when you get to be an old dog and you say I'm not going to learn any more tricks. Make sure you you, you build that team and, and grow some some people there that can help you. Now, there's other personalities also. Those are the first two that came to mind. I, I think of the compassionate person. Who, who lets people off the hook, gives them too good of a deal and walks away without the money. <laughs> that's, that's a bad one. Uh, over the overthinker who just can't possibly even move to the decision of, of, of negotiating possibly. Um, I'll cover more about this. I'm, I'm writing a book right now and I'll cover more about that in the book. Um, and I wanna also encourage you guys to, to share your insights on this stuff in our flippers forum because that's a great place to share what ideas do you have what what uh what things have you run into as far as you know uh personality limitations uh what kind of uh a team situation have you put together to overcome that share it tell us your stories tell us your ideas and uh you know like i said go to flippers forum uh, car flipping forum, uh, flipping genius group on on Facebook. You can go to that. Um, the next limitations I want to talk about are financial limitations, and I'm sure that that's one that a lot of you probably thought I'd talk about right away. Um, but it's definitely something that you you need to, to know about. Um, but you have to look at it from different uh, areas. It's not just how much money do you got in your pocket. It's not just it. Um, you have to look at your risk tolerance. And here I'm talking about psychologically, how much can you afford to risk? Uh, that that can be all different things for all different people. I'm I'm have a higher risk tolerance than my wife, and therefore it balances uh, things out. Um, also, what are your personal obligations? Do you do you, uh, are you are you risking your your rent money on on a you know, a, a 99 Honda that you're hoping to make $900 on, or are you risking your mortgage money on a 2014 uh, uh, Toyota that you're trying to make $5,000 on? And if you don't, you know, flip it, are you going to be behind on your house payment? That's not a good idea. So look at your risk tolerance and what obligations you have. Um, what are your credit restrictions? Uh, you know, what's your, what is your credit rating? Um, what outstanding debts do you have? These are important things to recognize. Um, what assets do you have? You know, what do you have in your pocket? And what other income do you have coming in to relieve that? You've got to balance all these things out so that, that you're comfortable doing these flips. And um, I don't want to go into crazy, this is not like an accounting class, um, but we can go into more detail uh, on the, the flippers forum. And, uh, but that's, the next thing is, is what are your needs? I thought this was an interesting one. Um, what are your needs? What are your demands and your desires? Now, the fact is, I like flipping cars and making 800 to to $1,000 on, on that, that 1999 uh, Honda Accord or the, or the, the uh, 2012 Chevy 
uh, Malibu. I got that last week. That's 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 going to make me a few more dollars, I think. Um, I like that. You know, that's good. If I make two thousand bucks, I'm delighted. If I make uh, eight hundred dollars, I'm happy. If I make four hundred dollars, yeah, it's okay. Um, but some of you might not be able to even wrap your mind around that. You've got to be making ten thousand dollars per deal to make it worth your while. That may be where you're coming from, and that's just knowing who you are. That's fine, but uh, recognize that. And, and that could also mean you've got to make the money. If you're in a situation where you've got to turn this stuff, that's a whole other thing. You've got those kind of demands, those kind of needs. Um, but uh, you know, recognize that too, recognize it, and then figure out uh, a plan to do it. Um, and these limitations can all change. You know, it, you know, hopefully for the better, but not necessarily. Um, talking about financial limitations, I love a story that a friend of mine told me. And I may have told this story before, but I'll just tell it again. You might not have heard that episode about a, a a young kid. I think he's in Africa who was who who wanted to get into flipping. His limitations allowed him not to buy cars. He could only afford to buy bicycles. He flipped a few bicycles, he moved up the mopeds. He flipped a few mopeds, he moved up to scooters. And by the time I heard the story, he was actually in the process of buying his first car to flip in whatever this little country is in Africa. I heard this story because I, 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 uh, I asked my friend, why are people listening to me all around the world? Because we have folks listening to us in 40 countries. And uh, hello. <laughs> and, and, and that was the answer he told me. Um, you don't know. There's people doing this type of thing everywhere, and uh, and that that was somebody he was actually helping. Um, I mentioned uh, I mentioned I'm 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 in the pro process of writing a book. Actually, been working on it for a couple of years, and I just pulled it back out and trying to refresh some things and add some things and and uh, try not to be a perfectionist on it because it represents me, and that may be an area where I'm more inclined to be a perfectionist than I am with, a, with a, that 99 Honda. Um, another resource that I want to mention, though, is, is Jeremy Fisher's uh, Three Hour Car Flip Academy. And you've probably heard me talk about it. But you know, when I started the Flipping Genius podcast, one of the first thoughts I, I had, because you got to try to figure out a way to make a dollar or two, I thought I had to put together a digital program about car flipping. But when I found Jeremy's course, Three hour car flip i found that he had already done what i wanted to do and he was already selling it at a price that was far less than i would be willing to sell it for so i didn't think it makes sense for me to reinvent the wheel only to try to sell it to you for more money and i reached out to jeremy fisher who happens to be one of my favorite podcasters um he doesn't do a podcast in the car flipping area he does a podcast in in uh another area called uh one of my favorite podcasts is it's called the uh, the awakening great stuff um jeremy came on our our podcast as our guest in episode 41 uh was gracious enough at that time not only to share his story but also to invite us uh to offer his program on on the flipping genius web website for less than 50 bucks <laughs> so for less than 50 dollars you get access lifetime access to Jeremy's uh, digital course and uh, textbook, Three Hour Car Flip Academy. And it is a great tool to get you going. If, if you're already in, into car flipping, um, you'll learn. If you're brand new, you're going to learn a lot. Um, really, a, really a well put together course. You can go to flippinggenius.com and either click right on the button that says Three Hour Car Flip academy or go to the resources page and you'll see on and on there when you do you'll be able to access uh, some sample videos and see what jeremy does he's had over three million downloads of his materials online the very good instructor does a, a tremendous job so i encourage you to to i encourage you to purchase his program if i'm not being straightforward enough i i, I recommend that you do when you do he kicks a little bit of money back to the flipping genius program so he helps support our cause too and I, I say thank you to Jeremy and thank you to you uh, listeners if you decide to do that. 
Um, I want to thank you for listening and, and sharing and subscribing. Um, ask, I want to ask you to, to give us a five-star review wherever you're listening. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe or save us as a favorite. This helps us move up the ranks and be, be, be seen by more people and drives the engine, you know, and that's, that's what I'm asking you to do. Um, please be sure to check out the YouTube channel if you're not watching it right now on the YouTube channel. And, uh, and if you are watching it on the YouTube channel, please be sure to check out the podcast because you can hear our podcast, the audio version, anywhere podcasts are heard from Apple and Spotify and iHeartRadio and any place else. Just search Flipping Genius and you'll see us come up in different formats. The cool thing about a podcast, if you don't listen to podcasts, uh, you can take them wherever you go and listen to them in your car, listen to them while you exercise or whatever. It's always free. And uh, if you're listening to the podcast, check out the YouTube channel. Not only are we putting the YouTube, the uh, podcast episodes on there ever since episode 59, but we also have our Coaching Up series, a, a series of videos called My Real Three-Hour Car Flip. By the way, that's, check that out too because I actually – did that just a few weeks ago. So you can see I'm actually doing, uh, I'm practicing what uh, Jeremy preaches. Um, pretty, pretty cool little story there. We, we did like a 280% turnaround or something like that. Um, great, great, great fun. And uh, there's over 50, uh, 50 videos on the, on the YouTube channel titled uh, Flipping Genius. And we've got over 67 episodes out uh, of the Flipping Genius podcast uh, also. And uh, remember to search Flipping Genius on, on Facebook groups and join our Car Flipping Forum. It's free. And, and then get on there and, and participate. Share with each other. Ask each other questions. Answer questions. There's some questions already out there. Um, help each other. I, a lot of people say, Randy, why are you giving all your secrets away? This makes me better. I mean, I, I just firmly believe it. I wish I could have gone back and played football after I coached football. But the body doesn't work that way. <laughs> but I'm a better flipper now because of sharing with you and putting myself in this position. I encourage you to do the same thing. Um, and I, I, I ask you again to please consider becoming a flipping team member. When you do, you help out the program. You help out. You help me out, and you help us keep being able to produce what we hope will be something that will help our listeners make more money. Hey, let's work together. Let's make some money. Let's all become flipping geniuses.